Okay, I'm here with Ian Harris, comedian, director, um, mar mixed martial arts um, person. <laughs> what do you do? Yeah. And um, voiceover person. I mean, he's like, the list goes on and on. You are a renaissance man here. Um, why are you here in Santa Cruz today? Well, I'm uh, here taping my, my second hour TV special as a comedian. Um, and I'm from here, from born and raised in Santa Cruz. I live in LA now, obviously for uh, work. But um, I wanted to do it in my hometown, so I so I brought it back to Santa Cruz and to the Rio, trying to make it happen. So what's gonna happen? This is not just a show. This I mean, this is gonna. You want to do something more with this show? You're filming it, right? Yes. Yeah. So I, I did. So I, in 2000, the end of 2012, 2013, I taped my first hour TV special, just like you would see on HBO or you know Netflix, the an hour special. Um, had a distributor and it didn't quite, it, it went to like Hulu and did some stuff like that, but it didn't go to Netflix because of the, how Netflix was at the time. The distributor didn't work out a deal, blah, 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 blah. So I've also directed many comedy specials for other comedians, and I just directed one for a guy named Dwayne Perkins, um, and we sold that to Netflix, and it's up on Netflix, and it's getting crazy reviews. They just did a review of the top top 100 stand-up comedy specials, um, and I think his was number 32 or something like wow. that on, on Netflix. So. He's a, uh, so I had this idea where I thought, well, you know, I've, I've directed several, I've co-produced a few, um, I've done my own, and I've spent three years, I, I want to, uh, I've got a whole new hour of material. So I, um, I said, you know, I'm just gonna self-produce another one, and, um, and hopefully it's going directly to Netflix through my, through my connections. I can't, I can't say for sure, because they have to see it, and they have to approve it, but, um, uh, I feel that it'll go, and if not, I've got other options. I've got, there's Amazon out there, there's Hulu again, there's Stars. there's there's uh, Showtime, there's other options. So I'm gonna, self-producing, co-producing, and then uh, um, when we're filming it, and full, full camera, jib, the whole thing, and then when it's done, it's hopefully going to Netflix. That's amazing, that's, it's more, and now it's like as a, as a content creator, which in a way you are, um, but you can produce, you can do everything, and then you just sell it to whoever yeah. wants it. Yeah. And, and that's, it's funny because that's that's what things like Hulu and, Net, and Netflix have done. Yeah. They've made this DIY kind of a, an era, but I've always done that. Like, I, I'm, I independently produced a feature film when I was 28 years old on film back when we had no video and, you know, put it on my credit card and did, did the, the Kevin Smith clerks route and made a feature film and got it on Netflix and, you know, and I'm just one of these guys that I do independent stuff and um, there weren't a lot of people doing independent comedy specials. It was always HBO. If you're about to break out, HBO would go, okay, you get a special okay. and blah, 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 blah. Well, then what happened was HBO became the spot where the big established people go. You want to watch Ricky Gervais. You want to watch uh, um, George Carlin. You want to see Chris Rock. That HBO produces those. They don't pick anything up outside. They produce their own and they produce A-list stars. So there was no one, no one that was doing what maybe Comedy Central a little bit, but those like, they have their little crew of people that they always do this do. You know, they don't yeah. see a lot of breakouts unless they're young and they're that Comedy Central brand. So for great comics that have been doing it a long time that hadn't had a break, there was no HBO. Then Netflix came along, and Netflix started doing it. Um, and there's all these other avenues. Amazon's in the, in the game now. But um, they also do a lot of acquisitions. They buy stuff. They don't produce in-house as much. They, they do, but that's not their thing. Yeah. So I thought, well, shoot, I've, I've done independent films. I'm a comedian. Why not merge those two and independently produce comedy specials for myself and for other comedians? Um, and see if I can sell them. And and uh, you know the other thing is you know Hollywood you know if a, a stand-up comedy special in Hollywood it's gonna cost a hundred thousand dollars. I'm like if I can do it for less than that yeah. independently I can use you know you call in favors and do what I gotta do edit it myself um, do everything myself and that's what I did. You could probably have a Mac that you could edit everything. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I was I was actually a commercial editor for uh, and freelance editor and assistant editor for seven years. Oh man, add so. another one to your list of things you yeah. do. Yeah. So, so is it easier then to, or is it easier or harder now to be a comedian say compared to like the 80s or do you think you know there, like with anything it's 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 harder and easier at the, at the same time there in the 80s like I started in the, in the early 90s okay. so in the 80s um, you know the joke is like and there, there comedy clubs were everywhere like you could you know, strip mall boom have a comedy club would be up and there would be 300 people there every night and that was the Seinfelds and the Paul Risers and all those 
you know, the Howie Mandels and all, the Billy Crystals and all those people that they were in the 80s who were like, you could go to these, they would go to comedy clubs and they could make a killer living just going from club to club. And, you know, they, that's why I always people talk about the comedy circuit, which there is no comedy circuit, but back in the 80s, you know, there were all these clubs everywhere in the world. There was improv and a funny bone. You could, you could work 50 weeks out of the year and you'd make great money. Um, and then the, uh, the economy crashed in the early 90s and all the comedy clubs were going out of business. Started papering the rooms. Um, nobody was, you know, all, all the rooms were, you, know, you get in free and they just wanted to sell drinks and food. And that became the model. And to, the, to this day, most comedy clubs still exist that way where you win free tickets and 90% of the tickets given are free. Wow. So people aren't used to buying tickets at comedy clubs. You, you go to some uh, club in, you know, Portland or Tucson or, or Phoenix or wherever else and you're on their list. They call you up every week. Hey, you got 10 tickets tonight. Who are you bringing? And so people devalue comedy, I think. Oh, yeah. So, and, and also, the, the pay went down. The pay is less now for a regular comedy club than it was in the 90s, which was less than it was in the 80s. Like, you, know, you used to make good money. Now it's like, you know, now if you're lucky and you're headlining, you might make $1,000 a week for a whole club. And, and sometimes you have to pay your own expenses. It's like you can't, you know, even practically live off that yeah. anymore. But, um, so, you know, so, yeah, so, so it's, it's harder in that sense. But... We have YouTube, we have Twitter, we have these things where if you know how to do that, you can make yourself a star without being without having television credits. Because what happened in the 90s is comedy clubs are down, so if you, if you wanted to make money as a comic, you had to have television credits. If you were on a sitcom or whatever, all of a sudden now you can sell tickets. So now you can ask a bigger price. You can go or you can do a theater, you can go to the Warfield, you can go to one of these places and you can you can sell tickets. Because you have a following. You have a following yeah. and a name. Um, whereas in the 80s you didn't need that, you just needed to be a comedian and yeah. that was it. Um, and then now it's come back around where um, and a lot of comedians from my generation hate it that there's YouTube stars that have two minutes of comedy but they're selling out rooms and people are going to watch this guy do comedy for an hour and they have two minutes because they're not comedians, they're YouTube stars but they have two million, ten million YouTube followers and people, they sell tickets or the club thinks they're going to sell tickets which is a whole other thing yeah. well, you know, there's, there's no, I don't see any evidence that shows that Twitter means they're going to view, view your television yeah. show but for some reason, 140 characters you get followers, that means you get a TV show nowadays but but that that is a great formula because you have, you have now you have this DIY situation where You've got YouTube, you've got Netflix, you've got these all these avenues. There's a million uh, different comedy channel. I mean, I mean, uh, television channels. There's so much more opportunity out there. But doesn't that mean that you have to be not just a comedian, but a marketer, right. and understand social media and understand? Okay, I got to get my videos and edit them and put right. them on YouTube. Yeah. And I would say, and I think that's the downside is that we see a lot of people that are famous because they're great at marketing. People go, oh, well, if you're funny, you'd have a million Twitter followers. No, no, no. If I was a good computer guy, I'd have... That doesn't mean I'm a good good comedian. Doesn't so mean all those Twitter followers are real. <laughs> right, absolutely. Yeah. And it doesn't and it doesn't mean that they're that they're going to come out. It doesn't mean that when you get out there and get up on stage, you're going to be any good. It doesn't mean you're not. Yeah. But um, so we have... So it's there are many more opportunities, but it creates its, its other problems as well. So there's always this kind of, um, you know... Uh, ebb and flow of, 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 of cool stuff happening that hurts other things and then yeah. helps in another way. So for someone like me, um, it, it, for the most part, it, 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 it helps because I can... I don't. I'm not good at social media. I'm, I'm older. I don't. Okay. I don't figure that. I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm doing all right with it. But it's not my. All my younger friends are like, dude, you should just be on YouTube every day, and you'll get a bunch of followers. And I, and I go, I can't. I don't see that model of working for free for two years by going, hey everybody, and then <laughs> hoping it works. Like, is yeah. there is there a model? Is there some sort of path that I can follow? Or yeah. no, you just gotta throw it out there and hope it works. So so what is your path? What, what what's like what's the trajectory? For Ian Harris, what do you want to do? Well, my goal is, I I just love comedy, um, and the two things I love doing, I love comedy, I love directing. So, I've gotten to this point now. You know, over the years, I wanted to be a writer and a director in movies, and I would still love to do that. But I realized that I love being on stage. I took some time off comedy, uh, about five years of doing it full time, and I've come back to it, and I love it. I just love being on stage. So my goal is with these specials is I want to do a special every two years. And I want to put it up on, get it on Netflix, get it on wherever, whoever wants to pick it up, and build my name as a comedian. I don't want a sitcom. 
Yeah. I'll take one if you give it to me for the month, sure, but but I don't need that. I would, if, if I can build myself, instead of social media, so there's young kids building social media, you got other people building on TV. Well, Netflix is TV, everyone's got Netflix. If there's people who love comedy, and I've got five specials on Netflix, and people are like, oh, Ian, here, another one. I'm gonna build my audience that way. And from that, um, be able to do what I do, I self-produce my own shows. Because what I do is kind of edgy, I talk a lot about religion and stuff. I can't go into the clubs I worked for 15 years and do what I do now. Because, you know, I used to headline these regular clubs and, you know, their paper in the room. Hey, you want to get you know, get 300 people in from, from the streets? They don't want some guy up there talking for 45 minutes about religion and, and, and politics. Because they're gonna, I'm going to walk half their audience. Their audience isn't there to see me. They're just there because they got free tickets. So you want people that actually follow you, to that want to see your yeah, your kind of comedy. Exactly. Yeah. So my goal is to get to a point where I can put my name in the paper, run a couple ads, put my name on the, up on the billboard and sell 500 to 1,000 tickets, and do that, do small runs a couple times a year, make a living, you know, and self-produce. Because, um, you know, again, if I, if I self-produce one show and I sell 500 tickets at 20 bucks, well, do the math, that's more than I would make in, in five weeks doing comedy to comedy club in one night. And I can do... 20 or 30 of those a year and make a decent living and you can do what you love yeah what i love doing yeah. to people who want to hear what i have to say and then in the meantime um direct direct and produce a couple specials every year for comedians make some, some money doing that but also help help other comedians that i really love that i don't feel have gotten the respect they deserve because it's such an in game uh, it's such a uh, an, an insider's game hollywood where it's like if you don't hang out you're not a bro, you're not hanging out, you don't smoke weed with the cool, young, 17-year-old executive <laughs> from the network, then then you don't get a, a sitcom. If you're not, if you're not, you know, the, the, the somebody who thinks they have cool hair, or, or she's funny and she's hot, or, you know, then half the time you don't get famous in LA. So my thing is, there's a guy that's 50 years old, there's a guy that's 32 years old, there's a girl that's 60 years old that kills it in the stage, uh, that's just so funny, but has a life, and they don't hang out, they don't do this stuff, so why isn't that person on Netflix? Why isn't that person on HBO? If they were, people would be like, whoa, how come I haven't seen this comic? So my goal is, let, let's let's show people what comedy's about. Comedy's not about age and, and being hip and being cool. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. But comedy's about being funny and having a point of view and, and, and saying something. And there are people, people who've been grinding for 40 years that have never been heard. And there are people that have been doing it for a year. They're just phenoms. And they all should get their chance. And if I can help do that, um, you know, then I'm, I'm going to direct some stuff as well. And comics, comics like having me direct because... I direct and I edit. I do all the work myself. So they don't have to do it. Right. Yeah. And I understand comedy. Yeah. I let them do their art. But I'm not going to edit out their jokes, which I've actually seen on specials where I watch it. Whoever did the editing didn't realize that there was a whole section that was a setup. And you edit it, you go, that joke didn't make any sense. Say, well, yeah, that's because the person didn't keep, the editor didn't understand the joke. That's interesting. I would never yeah. do that. I, yeah. I understand how the joke works. Yeah. You know. So what do you, I mean, like, after talking to you for these few minutes here, um, you you self-produce, Scott. You make your shows. You you c come up with the content. I mean, you are an entrepreneur in a way. Have you ever thought of yourself as an entrepreneur before all of this? Yeah, I think I, I don't. I don't know that I would use that. Or word, I see a business word. owner, maybe like in a way. I mean, in a way you are because you're not working for somebody. Right. Yeah. No, absolutely. I, and I think um, I don't think I ever would have. If somebody would have asked, I would have said yes. I'm an entrepreneur. I would have not used that word on yeah. my own. But Personally, I don't like that word, actually. Well, <laughs> Even you know, though, yeah. always, it, always, it, always, it always, to me, it's always some like, you know... Uh, Multi-level marketing guy or something? Right. Yeah, yeah me a, too. A, yeah. a frat boy in a business suit whose dad gave him some money. Like, yeah. that's what I always think of. Yeah. But, but it's, it's um, yeah, it is. And, and I always tell people, like, one thing I love about stand-up is that it's... it's it's like filmmaking in the sense that as a filmmaker, you have a writer, you have your director, you have your producer. And as a comedian, you're all that. And you're the actor. You're the writer, you're the director, you're the producer, you're the actor. Yeah. You're everything on stage in one shot. And and you're responsible. If it fails, it's on for you. the most part, it's on you. Not that there's yeah. not crappy audiences every now and then. But for the most part, it's on you if you fail. And if you succeed, that's all on you too. And, and, and then you add in the element of the, you know, independent filmmaking, which is a completely different animal than, than studio filmmaking. And I kind of feel like I've always felt that I do everything independently. I, I love doing things independently. And I love doing my own thing. 
and, and I'm just one of these people like I, I try to try to fit in and I try to do this the way that you're supposed to do it and I'm a rebellious guy man I grew up a Santa Cruz punk rock kid like like if you tell me no then I'm gonna be in your face if you shut a door I'm gonna I'm gonna kick it down like I'm just a great I'm one of those kind of people like I won't stop doing what I this is what I want to do you shouldn't be able to tell me that I can't do it and if that means that if you're not going to give me the opportunity, I'm going to create the opportunity. You make your own, yeah. And, and I yeah. just feel that that's what you have to do. And, you know, it's, I mean, like I said, I'm in my 40s and people are like, man, when, when do you give up? Like, you, you don't ever give up. Like, I'll, I'll be 80 and still trying to produce stuff if I haven't made it, you know? And because it, it's all a level. Like, I have some people that go, man, you're so successful. You've got a special on, you're doing a second special, you've directed specials, you've made a movie, you've, you know, you've, Trained fighters and you've cornered people in the UFC and you've done all these other people like oh you you're, you're my voice in the network I'm one of the voices of the Bravo network I used to be the voice of the Disney XD network and people are like oh that's so cool and meanwhile I'm over here still struggling yeah think kind of trying to make something happen <laughs> so it's all your perspective but you're you're making all of those you're the one that made those things happen they didn't come to you right. Bravo didn't come to you Disney XD didn't come to you you made you made that happen yeah yeah absolutely and and I think and and you know and it's the the trick is sustaining it yeah. to where you're 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 making a good living or doing whatever yeah. you need to do. And, and, and I'm a, I'm not I'm still at a point where I'm, I'm struggling every day and still keeping those those plates spinning. Like yeah. I, I'm not at a point where I can where I can go. All right, good. Yeah. I can I can chill now. Goes on autopilot. Hope, yeah. Yeah. I hope to get to a point at some point where uh, where I can do that at least on some level. I don't think I'll ever stop working. I just don't think it's in my nature. You know, even when things are going well. I invent 10 other things to do. You know, I just, uh, and I just always have something going on. Um, and I just think that that's my nature, but I, I feel that, I feel kind of feel you have to do that to stay to stay alive if you're the kind of person that I am where you just you need to create and invent and, and push and do things and, and you know, that's being an entrepreneur, I guess. That's what no, it is, yeah. Again, I, 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 that's not my favorite word, but right. that's what you know it defines. Um, yeah. Okay, so your show is this Sunday. 6 30 6 at the Rio yeah, Theater. Open at six and we'll yeah. be seeing everybody. So, how, uh, and it's going to be, so it's going to be taped, so everybody wants to dress to the nines, <laughs> yeah. or not, dress Santa Cruz like. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, what is somebody going to expect when they, or what should they expect when they come to one of your shows like this? Well, it, um, what I, my comedy is definitely, um, and it always comes off sounding kind of douchey, I don't mean to sound douchey. My comedy is kind of, smart and not saying that I'm smart I'm saying that the style of comedy I aspire to do is smart comedy let's just yeah. say that so I'm my stuff is I try to be well thought out I try to be thought provoking I try to talk about issues that, that matter or issues that are interesting um, it's not going to be you're not going to see a lot of you know low level relationship jokes or, or poop jokes or that kind of stuff yeah there'll be some stuff but I, it's, not, it's not like an Adam Sandler movie on, on, on TV uh, on, uh, on stage um, so there'll hopefully be some thinking and that sort of stuff um, but my main goal is to be funny still but but I, I, I talk a lot about science I talk a lot about science denialism I talk a lot about politics I talk about the stuff that I find interesting um, and the process of what people believe and why people believe it whether whether I'm for or against or I think it's ridiculous or, or, or I think it's it's valid I like to talk about why do people believe these things um, that they believe and that's kind of what my my comedy is about in general, and I also do impressions, which kind of comes out of left field. Um, so, you know, so yeah, so hopefully, you know, they'll, they'll get some, some some science talk and some politics talk, and and uh, and for the people who, who enjoy that that type of yeah. that type of comedy where you go, oh, cool, all right, I don't agree, but I, I enjoy, it. or yeah. oh, I really love what this guy had to say, that kind of George Carlin-ish type thing, or, or you know, Richard Pryor when he was when he was talking, you know, when he was really at his at his best, or or like some early Dennis Miller. Yeah. Um, that kind of thing. That's what I try to aspire to, and um, so I'm hoping people will will get that out of it. And and yeah, and it's it's an hour, and again we're taping it. Hope, hopefully it'll go. It's going to uh, to Netflix or, or something similar. And um, yeah, it, it should it should be a good show. That's all I can say. So <laughs> how do but uh, do we go to the Rio for tickets? Where how do we get tickets? Yeah, so you can get tickets. Um, there's a couple places you can get tickets online. If you go to the RioTheater.com, T R E Theater, RioTheater.com. There's tickets. You can also go to um, brownpapertickets.com, and it's uh, extra, extraordinary.brownpapertickets.com, extraordinary.brownpapertickets.com, and um, or yeah, or you can get them 
you can get them at the box office. So, um, but get them earlier. Yeah. Earlier is better. I would suggest earlier. Just in case it doesn't sell out. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. This is the the cheap shot here. Uh, I want one impression. You have to give me an impression. All right. Um, all right. I'm pretty on the spot here. <laughs> Here's my impression of Jason Statham. We're here getting a point, right? We're down in Santa Cruz getting a point, having ourselves a point, talking about Ian Harris extraordinary. It's gonna be extraordinary. And if you don't come up, you are going to be, oh, I can't swear, can I? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. Okay, you'll see that the unedited version yes. may be 6.30 at the Rio Theater this Sunday. Be there, thank you so much, Ian, for, for being with us. Thank you for having us. Oh, can I say one thing real yes. quick? Yes, yeah. By the way, all the, all the proceeds, or all the profits uh, of the live show taping are going to Camp Quest West, which is a science camp, summer, summer camp for kids. Great. So giving all the money to charity. Awesome, got funny and a good guy. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much. And we will see you at 6.30 at the Rio on Sunday. Have a great day.